Hello, my name is Dekel from the Cloud Foundry team. In the next few minutes, I will walk you through the features of the Cloud Foundry version 2. In this, you can see uh, the Cloud Foundry web console running at the moment at our hosted service on Amazon Web Services. Everything that you'll see here operates exactly the same if you have your own Cloud Foundry installation uh, behind your firewall in your data center. In this demo, we have an organization called Cloud Foundry Demo Org. Think of an organization as a line of business within your company or a big project where you are collaborating to bring applications to market. Within that space, we have within that organization, we have a few spaces: a development space, a testing space, and a staging space. Within each space, there are different users. Think of a space as a logical entity in which group of users are collaborating and seeing the same applications and the same services. In this example, I've used three spaces to illustrate a development phase, a testing phase, and a staging phase. Um, you can obviously configure spaces however you like to um, whatever needs for your application and your project. What we're going to do is we're going to deploy a Java application into the development space and then progress it to the testing phase um, without any code changes. And while we're doing that, we'll show uh, a, a few other features of the portal. So the application that we're going to use is an online bookstore reading in, written in Spring. It's a completely standard Spring application, um, and you can do everything that I'm doing in this demo directly from your uh, selected ID, like Eclipse or SDS, by simply dragging and dropping the project into the Cloud Foundry environment. So let's get started. Um, we're going to, first thing is we're going to switch back to our command line and we are going to look at the app. This is the books.war file that you've seen before. And we're going to target a cloud. In this case, we're targeting the, the Cloud Foundry hosted service in the org Cloud Foundry demo and in a space development. And we're pushing the application. We'll give it a name. One instance is enough for now um, and a memory of 512 megabyte. This, by the way, is the instance memory. It's not a VM. So in Cloud Foundry, it's important to understand everything is the application is the unit of deployment. So I'm not starting a virtual machine here at any point. There is a pool of on-demand capacity to which I deploy. I'm going to define a domain and subdomain, and we're going to add services. This application needs two types of services, uh, my, uh, a SQL service, a database, and a NoSQL service. There is a list of services that are available as part of the Cloud Foundry marketplace. When you are installing Cloud Foundry on-prem, you will have a different list of services based on what you desire to expose to your developers um, via the Cloud Foundry service connector or via the core services that comes with Cloud Foundry. In this case, we'll select We'll start with the dev SQL service, dev database. You can select a plan. And then we'll also bind another service, which is our NoSQL service. What happens right now is I'm defining another service. And in this case, I'm creating a, a NoSQL using Redis. We'll call it dev NoSQL, selecting a plan and creating the service. The next step, once we'll move it to QA, we will show how we're binding to existing services that have been exposed by our company for us to use. In this example, we are actually creating the service when we're pushing the application. So two services is enough. And we're going to save the configuration into a, a YAML file. We'll use that file in order to re-push this application to QA without answering any of those questions. So we save the configuration and now the application is being deployed. While we're doing that, uh, let's go back to the portal um, to show a few other features. So as I mentioned, you have uh, spaces as a, as a very as the logical entity. 
you can associate roles between users and spaces. So users can have different organizational roles, development roles. You can see here that I have, we have certain users that are part of our development environment, certain users that are part of our testing environment with different permissions, manager, developer, auditor, uh, similar in the staging roles. And I can also go and define uh, who can edit and change the billing and account information to set up spending limits, um, either internal or external, on my space. In terms of orgs, I can define, so far we deployed the application into the default free domain name uh, of the Cloud Foundry service called cfapps.io, but I can also customize the domain from, for my purposes, so I can say mycompany.com here. Marketplace. This is, we've used those services. We've used ClearDB and Redis in this demo. And we are gradually adding more and more marketplace partner into this uh, list. When you are deploying Cloud Foundry on-prem, you will have your own list of services that you expose. So let, let's get back to our development space. And we can see that our application is currently running and it's green, 100%. Um, and it's bound into those two services that we just created the database and the NoSQL, and it uses some amount of CPU with one instance. And if we'll click that URL of the application, we can actually see that it's running. It's a, a bookstore application. We can add a book, um, which I've one of the books I've recently read um, by Dan Brown, and we can save it. And we can also look for some other Dan Brown books here and see that we have a bunch of other books. So full-blown application running on a URL directly. And let's see what happens here. So let's go back into our command line. We were here, right? So we start the first stage, we started uploading the WAR file, which is the application package that this 19 meg. This is the source code, the compiled source code. Now, Cloud Foundry uses a concept of a build pack. A build pack is basically a set of instruction of what runtime bits I need in order to run this application. In this example, it's a Java app. So Cloud Foundry used the default build pack for Java. You can also customize your own build pack and basically put whatever you want there. Um, in this case, we installed Java, we downloaded the JDK, uh, with a specific version. Again, you can customize the build pack and use your own version. We also download Tomcat and Apache and MySQL connector and Postgres connector. And since this, this is a Spring application, we're also using auto configuration. And from that, after the build pack process, from this 19 meg, we got to a 57 meg droplet. And that droplet is basically everything Cloud Foundry needs in order to create, to actually run the application. And then the application is being sent for staging in one of our execution agent and being set for execution. Now, it's important to remember that I haven't started any virtual machine here, any app servers, any web servers. It's all on demand and the application is the unit of deployment. Now, if we go back to our portal here, what we're going to do is let's say we're happy with our application, everything works. Now we want to move it to the next phase in the life cycle, to the testing phase. So we don't have to wait weeks for setting up new environments. Everything is on demand. All we're doing is we're targeting a different space and redeploying this application. And in this example, we already have two services provisioned for us because this is, let's say I'm a, not a developer right now, I'm a, you, QA user and I mean need to bind to our production level services that were exposed to me by the company DBA. So it's a database and a NoSQL. So in order to do that, we're basically going back to our command line here and we're going to target a different space. So instead of development, we will target our testing space. And then we're going to push the exact same application. Now, while we're doing that, before we're doing that, we are actually going to change the manifest file. So remember when I answered yes to the save configuration, in this manifest file, I basically I can see my application name and the services that it's using. So using a very simple text editor that we can expose from any continuous integration system, I'm going to change the name to book QA. 
and I'm going to use instead of the dev services I'm going to use the company services that were already created for me by the company's DBA I'm going to save this come back to our application and just do push and this time I'm not going to answer any questions you see it's creating automatically the app binding it using the services that I just defined the company database and the company NoSQL and it's uploading the WAR file exactly the same operation as we've seen before let's get back to the portal and while, while we are uploading it uh, we are you see the app is now being staged and started no code changes no configuration changes binding into different services in a new environment while we're waiting for the app to be uploaded let's show some other cool stuff here is a small little Ruby app this time it's a Ruby application all it's doing is printing the port of the instance and we are going to scale it instead of one instances we're just gonna say 20 and I can do 100 so there is another uh, video on our YouTube channel that actually shows how you do this to hundreds of instances very quickly now let's look at our instance count and you see that it's in 30 percent and it's starting to rise now what's actually happened here is that we are starting all of these extra instances of the application and if I go here and start hitting refresh you will see that the port is actually changing so we're not only creating additional instances very very fast blazing fast we are also load balances between them and we can do that because again we're not starting any virtual machines we are assigning execution containers warden containers within um, within an OS process so <clears throat> let's get back to our staging environment and you see that the app is running and I can click now it's running in QA using two different services I can click it and again same thing I can this is starting a new database right now so if I'll go and search for down brown this time you will not see the book that I've added before so binding into new databases so let's recap quickly recap on what we've seen we've seen the cloud foundry web console running on a hosted service on aws and can run exactly the same on your environment we've seen how you target different spaces pushing a spring application from scratch to a live running website without starting any web servers app servers vm everything is on demand in our development environment we've actually created the services and bound them, bind them into the app. In our testing environment, we used existing services exposed to us from our company. We've also showed how we can scale application to 20 instances or hundreds of instances very, very quickly. We've shown the ability to do things directly from your development IDE. And we've also shown the Cloud Foundry command line. Thank you very much.